Okay, this is video lecture number 52. Today we are talking about the undoing of Reconstruction. For our subsections today, we are going to look at the Republican unraveling, counter-revolution in the South, the political crisis of 1877, and finally lasting legacies. So Northern support for Reconstruction was never reliable uh, because most white Northerners feared that President Johnson's program threatened to undo the Union victory and place Confederates back in the saddle. Uh, they preferred the program of the Congressional Republicans to the presidents. Uh, however, they were at best only slightly more liberal in their racial views than Southerners. Uh, and over time, Northerners were increasingly receptive to Southern white arguments that blacks were not to be trusted to govern. Most Southern whites, of course, opposed Congressional Reconstruction from the very beginning, um, though the vehemence of the opposition fluctuated. Uh, the animosity of Southern whites towards Reconstruction, uh, Republicans and African Americans intensified when elections were contested uh, or when sensitive issues were placed before the public. The Ku Klux Klan was especially active during such times, uh, despite legislation passed against this new organization. The final undoing of Reconstruction came in the mid-1870s. A serious economic crisis struck the nation in 1873, uh, plunging it into a depression. New uh, economic issues such as unemployment, labor conflict, and monetary policy uh, increasingly took president precedence over the uh, aging agenda of the sectional conflict, which uh, white northern lack of sympathy for blacks became increasingly important in shaping federal policy toward the South. At the same time, southern whites got bolder. Uh, organizing paramilitary organizations to carry elections by whatever means were necessary. In such states as Mississippi and South Carolina, uh, the end of Reconstruction resulted not so much from an election as from a white counter-revolution. So let's have a closer look at the undoing of Reconstruction with our first section, the Republican Unraveling. The death of radical Charles Sumner in 1874 signaled the wane of Reconstruction. Events of the 1870s as well as racist media reports uh, deepened northern white disinterest in southern black issues. Scandals such as the credit uh, mobilia and the uh, whiskey ring in the Republican administration of President Ulysses S. Grant eroded public confidence in Grant's policies, uh, particularly during his second term in office. A sudden economic depression then in 1877 created massive unemployment, uh, which decreased public support of the Freedmen's Bureau and the Republican Party, as well as public spending and private investment in the South. Northern resolve was also worn down by Southern white resistance against Reconstruction. Uh, the collapse of the Freedmen's Savings and Trust Company uh, signaled that the party of Reconstruction was losing its moral leadership. Now, classic liberals, uh, those who believed in free trade, uh, smaller government, and limited voting rights, broke away from the Republican Party, and they formed the Liberal Republican Party. Uh, they ran Horace Greeley in the presidential election in 1872, uh, longtime publisher of the New York Tribune, um, Grant, however, won overwhelmingly. Liberals denounced universal suffrage and decried that blacks were unfit to govern. Grant, again, won overwhelmingly. Uh, he captured 56% of the popular vote in every single electoral vote. So let's move on to our next section then, counter-revolution in the South. The undoing of Reconstruction was as much about Southern resistance as Northern acquiescence. Most white Southerners believed that Reconstruction governments were illegitimate regimes. Democrats worked hard to get the vote restored to ex-Confederates, uh, appealing to racial solidarity and Southern patriotism and violently attacking black suffrage as a threat to white supremacy. The Ku Klux Klan first appeared 
in Tennessee in 1866 under Nathan Bedford Forrest. By 1870, the Klan was operating almost everywhere in the South as an armed force whose terrorist tactics served the Democratic Party. Congress, between 1869 and 1871, attempted to suppress the Klan through legislation known as the Enforcement Laws. The Grant administration's assault on the Klan uh, also illustrated how dependent African Americans and the Southern Republicans were on the federal government. But Northern Republicans were growing weary of Reconstruction and the bloodshed that it seemed to be producing. So prosecuting Klansmen was an uphill, ba uh, uphill battle with U.S. attorneys uh, who usually faced all white juries and lacked the resources to handle the cases. After 1872, prosecutions began to drop off and many Klansmen received hasty pardons. Republican governments that were denied federal help found themselves overwhelmed by the massive resistance of their ex-Confederate enemies. Uh, between 1873 and 75, Democrats overthrew Republican governments in Texas, Alabama, and in Arkansas. In Mississippi, armed local Democrats paraded and stuffed ballot boxes, uh, taking control of the state in 1875. By 1876, Re uh, Republican governments remained in only Louisiana, South Carolina, and Florida. Uh, elsewhere, the former Confederates were back in control. As early as 1873 in the Slaughterhouse cases, the court began to undercut the power of the 14th Amendment. In the Civil Rights cases, 1883, uh, the justices also struck down the Civil Rights Act of 1875. The court effectively had cut off the avenue of the federal courts for the pursuit of justice and equal rights. Okay, our next section is the political crisis of 1877. Republicans nominated Rutherford B. Hayes as their presidential candidate, and his Democratic opponent was Samuel J. Tilden. Uh, both favored home rule for the South. When Congress met in early 1877, it was faced with, faced with both Republican and Democratic electoral votes from Florida, South Carolina, and Louisiana. The Constitution declares that Congress regulates its own elections. So, Congress appointed an electoral commission. Uh, the commission awarded the disputed votes to Hayes by a vote of 8 to 7. Democrats controlled the House and set about stalling a final count of the electoral votes. Uh, but on March 1st, they suddenly ended their delaying tactics and Hayes was inaugurated. Reconstruction had officially ended. So, lasting legacies in our next section. In the short run, the withdrawal of U.S. troops had little impact on the lives of most Southerners. Uh, the broad trend of radical Republican loss of power and the rise of Confederate and Southern Democratic power exerted the most impact on these Southerners. Uh, although Southern whites used violence to put down black aspirations to political power, uh, they could not return the South to the antebellum reality of slavery. Reconstruction had shaken the entire legal framework that justified the United States as a white man's country. Legal cases brought by other minorities showed that the 14th and the 15th Amendments had transformed the very nature of American citizenship. Okay, so that is it for today's video lecture. Please answer the review questions now and continue on with your work and your notes.